2 Samuel 19. And it was told Joab, he's on the battlefield. Behold, the king weepeth. That's the first time that word shows up, weepeth. A long time to the Bible. And mourneth for Absalom. And we'll let the chapter speak for itself. And the victory, first time that word shows up. Weeping and victory, same. The victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. I mean, you gotta look at it. As far as David's point of view right now, that's his son. And it looks like that he loved Absalom above all his sons. And Absalom's dead. He gave an order to his men, don't touch Absalom. Well, what are you going to do? Let him live? Let him... So he grieved for his son. And the people got them by stealth. That's the only time that word shows up. Stealth. They're quiet. Making no noise. They're not singing. They're not talking. That day into the city, Jerusalem. As people being ashamed steal away when they flee in the battle. So there's no singing. There's no dancing. It's like we retreated. We surrendered. We ran away from the battle. It's a victory. But it sure ain't no victory. But the king covered his face. And the king cried with a loud voice. Oh my son Absalom. Oh Absalom. My son. My son. It's the enemy. It's his son. This is the one that caused David and everybody to run. And Joab came into the house to the king. And said. David gets balled out by... The people under him. Nathan comes in and balls him about. Joab is going to step in. He's going to ball him out. Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants. The enemy has been taken down. Everybody should be hoopla -ing. Everybody should be happy. But they heard you're over here bawling. They heard you're crying. You're not even outside. You're not with the people. You're in the bedroom. You're in a room somewhere in the house. Which this day have saved thy life. You're alive because of today, David. And the lives of thy sons. Your sons are alive today. And of the daughters, the women of your family are alive. And the wives, look, and the lives of, the, of thy wives, and the lives of thy concubines. Your whole entire family today, David's alive. What are you doing bawling? You shame the people. In, now watch this. In that thou lovest thy enemy. It's Absalom. And hatest, that's the first time that word shows up, thy friend. His family, his friends, his troops, his army, the children of Israel. They're all confused because of you, David. The enemy has died. And Aren't we supposed to be celebrating here? Isn't this the one that drove our king out? Isn't this the one that was terrorizing? Is not this the one that caused the civil war in Israel? And David is sad. Aren't we alive? Aren't we a well? Aren't we should be rejoicing? What's wrong with David? For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest, first time that word shows up, neither princes, that's the people under you. Nor servants. Those are the people that work for you. Now watch Joab. He's speaking before a king. 
King has power to say, shut up. If you don't shut up, I'll just take your mouth off your neck. I'll behead you. For this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived, and all we that died this day, then it had pleased thee well. You're a traitor, David. What if all of us died? What if all your wives died? What if all your sons died? Your daughters? What about all the servants? All the What if all the people that are under you, David, died in this battle and Absalom was still alive? You'd be happy as anything. And that's coming from the first and only commander of David's army. Now there's Abishai and there, uh, there's another one there, I forget his name, but Joab is the captain of all the military forces, and he steps into the king and says, you know what? You know what I think, David? I think you would have your enemy, Absalom, alive and all of us dead. I think that would make you very happy right now. David had just lost three sons. The baby, Ammon, and now Absalom. Three sheep. He's still got one more to go. He's already been told by Nathan this was all going to happen. And we got to realize when we sin, boo hoo hoo, oh, you know what? Be not deceived, God's not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You got You got to go on. He is the ruler of the nation of Israel, and he's not even where he's supposed to be. He's not in Jerusalem. He's still on the other side of Jordan. He's on the run. He's a defeated king. And his tears are for the enemy. Now therefore arise. Go forth. And speak comfortably. That's the first time that word shows up. Unto thy servants. Um, now today is 9-11. A day that we, mem we memorialize the men and women that died in the World Trade Towers. And yet after that happened, our country, oh, it's not the bad religion people. It's only the elite of these religious people that those people took down those towers. No, you're crying for the wrong ones. And you upset the entire nation. You're either a Muslim or you're not a Muslim. All Muslims are the same. If they're dedicated to Allah, they're dedicated to Prophet Muhammad, in their writings is to shed blood and to kill. Now they don't believe that, they're not Muslim. And we now allow, <coughs> excuse me, we allow that religion in our public school systems and we kick out God, Jesus Christ, and the Bible. And we wonder why we got all this killing. That's what's going on with David right now, the enemy. Oh, I feel so sorry for them. You better speak comfortably unto thy servants. This is still Joab bawling David out, for I swear by the Lord. Here comes an oath of God. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Joab is very serious about what he's telling David right now. It ain't just capital L-O-R-D. It is God, Jehovah, a murderer. This is the same way that Nathan came to David in the Lord, Jehovah. If thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night. Everybody's going to leave you, David. You're going to be all by yourself. You better get your butt out of that room. You better get down to the servants. You better get down to the princes. You better get down to the children of Israel. And you better speak comfortably to them. And almost looks like Joab saying, everybody's going to leave you tonight. That includes me. If you don't get right right now, we're gone. Tonight. And that we, I mean, excuse me, that well, excuse me. And that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth unto now. All right? 
You had the Philistines against you. God gave you victory. You had King Saul going after you. God gave you the victory. You just had your own son overseat your authority. God gave you the victory. Man, if you don't get right right now, you don't get back to those people. This is going to be worse than you ever. You said you fought a bear and a lion. Well, that what's going to happen right now if you don't get right? That will destroy you. And you'll have nothing. You won't even have sheep. All the evil that befell thee from thy youth unto now. Remember, Joab and David are a relations family. Joab is the son of his sister, Zariah. And there could be almost, I don't know, the Bible doesn't say, but maybe that these two grew up together in the family clan. Or maybe Joab knows enough of David's life that he can speak as thus. Then the king arose and sat in the gate. We just read that in Ezekiel today about the prince, David. That gate that's closed that the prince is going through. The millennium. Verse 8 pictures the millennium. Christ has risen from the throne of God. He comes down. He gathers his people together who are distraught, who are in pain, who are in sorrow, who have been chased by the Antichrist, who, who Absalom has, is destroyed. The false prophet and the beast are locked into the lake of fire that burns forever. Satan has been bound for a thousand years. Jesus is here. He set up his kingdom, the millennium, the temple, the law, and the people are being comforted by Jesus Christ. David, get in that court. Get in that gate. That's where you belong. And they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king does sit in the gate. He's back. We left off with David sitting in the gate at the end of last chapter. And he takes off and he goes and boo-hoos. His place is in that gate for victory. He is to reward. He's to give a speech. He's to congratulate the people for helping the kingdom and put him back on that throne. And people, well, where is he? He's in the bedroom crying. Why? The enemy's dead. Huh? I don't understand. And all the people came before the king. For Israel had fled every man to his tent. Look at that. At the actions of hearing David, there, we're going, we're out of here. What's going on? As Joab said, tonight, if you don't get right, they'll be gone. I'll be gone. Everybody be gone. And we don't even know if David heard what happened to his concubines through Absalom. He hasn't seen what Absalom's done to the castle or to the homes or anything. He's still on the run. And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel because of what David saying. What happened to David killed his thousands? I mean, 10,000. Saul killed his thousands. Well, look what the people of Israel are saying. The king saved us out of the hand of our enemy. Yes. He delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. Yes. And now he is fled out of the land for Absalom. True. He left because Absalom took over. And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Look, look at him. We put that king in office. We put that king in authority. He's dead. Now therefore. Why speak ye not. A word of bringing the king back. The world. And everybody's going to love that antichrist. That will be their man of man. That will be their, their peace giver. That will feed everybody. Maybe in healthcare. I don't know. But everything will be sought in that Antichrist. But when they realize. When he is standing where he ought not to be. Said Jesus. 
And when they have to leave and they have to run, they don't go back and get their coal. They don't get back and get their canned goods. They run. And when they get to, we believe, sell a preacher. Sell a preacher. They're going to say, why don't we bring our king back? We've been so long without a king. We are supposed to be a nation under a king. And there's only one king that can do it, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And when Jesus Christ comes back from the sky on the white horse, there is on his vesture upon that horse, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And they will say, that is our king. Why can't we not bring him back? Where else did that happen? Of Jesus. That nowhere else could it be proclaimed but a sign. That bumper stickers don't work. When Jesus was on that cross and Pilate said, the king of the Jews. And that dying thief looked at that sign. He looked there for a moment. And he said, Jesus. I'm not going to be able to do the words, but he says, remember me in thy kingdom. And Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Where did he get the kingdom? Where did he get the idea that Jesus is the king, a thief that's dying among thieves? So the charges are. He read that banner that was over Jesus' head. And that dying thief would probably have been Jewish saying, you know what? Why can't I bring that that king into my life. That's the king. He's not the king of the church. And he turns to Jesus with the authority of the kingdom. And Jesus says today. Thou shalt be with me in paradise. And when those Jews have run from the Antichrist. And wherever city they be. Wherever is Jesus Christ will pick them up. They will read that title. King of kings and Lord of lords. And they will recognize at that moment. They will say what are the nail prints in your hands. He said I was wounded. In the house of my friends. And then the scriptures will be lit in up to him. To realize that's him. And their motion at that point is. Let's bring the king in. The king is not in Jerusalem. Let's bring him to Jerusalem. And he set up the millennial kingdom. So why speak ye not a word. Of bringing the king back. That's a reference to Jesus Christ. And the king sent to Zadok. That's the priest. That's the priest. And his family will be set up in the millennial kingdom. Zadok. Because they were dedicated to God. The other Levites and priests left God. But Zadok and his family did not leave God. And God gave them testimony that in that millennial kingdom. The sons of Zadok. And, Abi and to Abiathar the priest. Saying. Speak unto the elders of Judah. Saying, why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house? Judah! That's David's family. That's the family that Jesus Christ came of. Judah, why aren't you speaking? Did not great, 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 great grandpa, did he not say to Judah, the scepter shall not part from Judah? It has separated. The scepter is gone. Judah, why are you not bringing that king back? Why are you the last, the last, to bring the king back to his house? He's not home. Seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house. Here are my brethren. He came unto his own, and his own received them not. He says in Matthew 24, I was in prison, you visited me. I was hungry, you gave me food. I was sick, you took care of me. He says, well, when did we do that? When you did it unto my brethren. You did it unto me. Interesting. Ye are my bones and my flesh. Jewish. Jesus Christ is Jewish, not colored, not African, not Asian, not American. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say to Asa, Amasa, Art thou not my bone and my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, that thou be not captain of the host before me continually, 
in the room with Joab. He just kicked Joab out. That tongue lashing, David, get Joab out of here. Amasa, you're in charge now. And he bowed the heart, he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah. Even at the heart, even as the heart of one man, unity. So that they sent this word to, unto the king, return thou and all thy servants. So these are the men that are in Jerusalem. Return. These are not the men with David. Because if they were the men with, with David, they would not say return because they're not back. These are the men that are in Jerusalem and saying, okay, Absalom's gone. We have set him up as king. He's dead. Bring that king back because he's not here. So the king returned and came to Jordan River and Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king to conduct, that's the first time that word shows up, the king over Jordan. And this would be the place where Israel crossed over through Joshua. This would be the place where Jesus Christ is going to cross over. This is the place where David crossed over. It's an important place. And we're seeing Jesus Christ going to be carrying those Jews over. King of kings and Lord of lords. And there will be people ready to make Jesus say, King, come on through. Come on through. And we're going to stop there. Because we're going to pick up Shimei. we got to look at Shimei. He's an interesting man.